ladies and gents, this is Linda Fachik777 and today I'm coming at you with a design team project for the piece by piece. Now this project is the second project that I'm doing for a swap I'm in. We've decided to swap two things. I made this project to match the other one that I've already shown you guys in the video which is this tool caddy I made that was really pretty in aquas and creams and white colors and um, the person I'm swapping with wanted me, one of her requests was to alter a clock. So that's what I've done. Now I didn't start off with a clock with this project. I was in one of our local stores and I saw this bird feeder. Okay, and when I saw this bird feeder, I thought that I could, you know, work with it and add a clock to it. And so that's what I've done. So I'm going to get my sign out of the way so I can show you just what I came up with. Okay, all right, here we go. Now this bird feeder only opened from the top, okay? So what you're going to see, this open area in the front, I cut that into the bird feeder, okay? So here we go. All right, I'm going to kind of put it far back so I can get it all in scene here. All right, so there's what I've come up with. Let me move my camera up just a touch. Okay, there it is. Okay, so, and I will show you, of course, in a minute. This part is the only thing that came off, this top lid. This area that you see here, I took some wire cutters and I cut that rectangle opening into the bird feeder so that I could decorate the inside and add the clock that you're seeing right there. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is just kind of turn this around so you can see all sides of it and then I'll zoom in as best I can and we'll kind of go from there, okay? So you've, there's the um, inside, of course. It likes to stick to the bottom of my thing here because the texture on it. So just starting to kind of turn it around. And I've decorated, you know, all sides of it. Okay. Just slowly getting a look so you can see. Now we're on the straight back side. Okay. And then we'll kind of come around to this right. There we go. And then we'll come back around to the front. Now, as you can see, I've got it all painted up. And I, of course, painted it up with my uh, acrylic paint mixed with sand technique because I just like that idea and it's in just a vintage white color okay um, as you can see I'm gonna just oopsie I didn't mean to move my camera I'm gonna kind of zoom in and we're gonna start at the top because you see like a bird up there that was already on this okay so I'm just gonna kind of move this up a little bit because I know as I zoom in There we go. That metal bird was already on there, and I didn't really do a lot to it, as you can see. I just textured it up and left it all lumpy-bumpy, okay? And it's really cute. The little wings on it, I mean, they actually, like, move. So I just thought that was such a cute little um, bird, and I didn't really want to do a lot to it. And to be honest, I couldn't really think of a whole lot to do to it. I didn't want a bunch of flowers and stuff on it. There's the back side of the bird. Isn't that cute, his little tails and stuff? I didn't want to, you know, add a bunch of flowers to it and, and um, stuff like that. So I just kind of left it like it is. I thought the rest of this project had enough on it. So as you can see, what I started out with, this is just some... Uh, some of that kind of web webbed type ribbon from my stash and I added all my flowers are like wild orchid crafts um, most of them most of my flowers were all in white like these little ones I only my great big ones were already in a teal color these little ones that you'll see in teal color I just took some uh, teal colored acrylic paint and just thinned it out with some water and put it in a spray bottle to make my own color you know of teal so that's what that is there and then I'm gonna move my camera down just a little bit and then at the tip top of the roof here I added some beautiful um, Venice lace from the piece by piece I love just this little scalloped edge and I just thought it went really nicely I wanted to leave it kind of in a white tone because I I like mixing kind of creams and whites together and there are other things on the project that's in white so I didn't mind that that was still you know a little bit in the white tone 
because I did think about, you know, coloring it with Lindy's and making it more of a cream color, but decided against it. Okay, so I'm going to move the camera down a little bit to the bottom so we can kind of get to the inside here. I'm going to back it out just a little bit so we can kind of see the front here. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around the bottom edge and let you see all that, and then we'll move to the inside of the cage okay so this this feeder I keep calling it a cage because it was a bird feeder and I turned it into like a little kind of birdhouse bird cage type thing this feeder had of course like a bowl type thing on the bottom because you know that's where the birds are going to kind of um, feed because what you know you fill it with seed and then the seed fell out the holes in the bottom that I covered up so and I actually loved that when I saw because it, it gave me a place to put you know pretty things and stuff flowers into so I put a bunch of flowers and stuff inside here. This person likes butterflies, so I made sure that I added some butterflies and stuff. Um, I'll bring it in a little bit closer. Added some butterflies around the project and stuff, as you can see. I added these wooden letter tiles, these X and O, from my stash. You know how I like to add an X and O on everything. Added quite a few little metals from bead landing and stuff. So here's a little lock over here. All along on the inside are... Wild Orca Craft Flowers, of course, and I've got a few spread here, a few little um, I Am Roses crocheted flowers. Forgot about those little gems I added in there. This is a Prima Resin Fairy, and I wanted to make her so, you know, she looked like she was looking into the little birdhouse, and so I think I did that pretty good. And what's funny is, funny story for you, uh, when I added her here, and then I went back later, I was showing a friend of mine this project, and then I was showing her the other thing that I made for her. I had completely forgotten that on the other project, I had added another little fairy. And so without knowing it, even though I was trying to make these, you know, match and color and stuff, I kind of made it match in theme because I added a fairy and butterflies and everything to the other one. You know, so without knowing it, I added two of the same kind of items on there. So they really look like they're a matching set, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So, you know, kudos to me with did it without knowing it. <laughs> anyway, so I'm going to move this around to the other little side here. Like I said, we're going to go along on the bottom. Okay, and I'm just going to kind of move this ribbon out of the way. I'll tuck it up here. So I've got some more flowers and stuff from Wild Oak Crafts. This right here is weed sprays from the piece by piece store i'm going to bring it in and show you they are these right here beautiful weed sprays they're kind of in a blue tone and then it goes down to a little bit of a teal tone so those worked wonderful so as you can see right there i just kind of made it sticking out amidst the flowers in here and then I added, since this is a clock, I wanted to add just, you know, sporadically some numbers around the clock. So this is a Prima Roman numeral number seven, a metal one, okay? So then I'm going to turn it, and we're going to kind of go around to the back side a little bit more, and I'm going to bring my camera back out a little bit. And so what I did is a bunch of flowers all up in here, because what I had to do is when... Since this feeder or house has holes in it, when I glued flowers to the inside, of course the glue is going to come seeping through the holes on the outside. So I had to make sure I covered it up. So this one area is all filled with flowers to compensate for the flowers that are glued on the other side. Now these large blue flowers were the ones that were already done in teal that I got from Wild Oak Crafts. And then I've got some more cream colored flowers and... and um, some crocheted flowers here. This is one of those Prima vines. Uh, I'm trying to remember what collection it came from. I think it's from the Fairy Rhymes or the Divine Collection. And I believe I got it from Beverly's store. I know she's carried some of these vines in her store before. So that's what that's from, just to kind of give it a little bit of texture coming out here. And then right here is like a little acrylic butterfly that I got from Michael's. And then some more uh, flowers and stuff coming down. And then let me kind of lift up so you can see the bottom edge. Now we'll come in a little bit closer. Oops, wrong way. Of course, I'm going to do it once every time. So you can kind of see the bottom edge coming around here. Right in here, this is just a Recollections resin piece I tucked in there because it had teal on it. And then I've got some more flowers tucked in the bottom and everything. This here is a teeny tiny rosette trim that Annie gifted me. 
This cute little resin bird is from the piece by piece since I had a birdie on the inside and a birdie up top of the um, little house here. I thought I'd have a birdie at the bottom so you know a bunch of birdies are hanging out, right? <laughs> and then it missed some more flowers. Again, another butterfly. And right in there I've got another metal Roman num or not Roman numeral, a metal number four. Okay. And then we're going to come around to this side, right in here, tucked in here, and you can't really see on the inside. I use three of them. These are the rosettes that Beverly carries in her store. We got three of them in our design team kit, and I use them all up in the aqua. And these are, of course, what they look like. This is just the mauve color. These rosettes make wonderful filler and it gives it just a real soft, soft touch and I really like that. So that's what that is right there. And then coming out from the rosette, these are the large candy gems. Now these are actually in a blue color so you can see a little bit more of a blue tint to it. But when they're kind of up against the teal a little bit, I think they take on a little bit of a teal tone as well. So that's why I decided even though these are light blue in color, they worked on this project. Okay, and then this right here, this is just the bottom portion of one of those big aqua flowers. And then I put a little white flower in front of that again because I had to cover up some flowers um, on the inside because of the glue seeping out. And then we'll come around to more flowers and more crochet flowers. And I tucked a lot of flowers in behind the fairy so that she's kind of covered and pretty, of course. Okay. And I'm going to go back up to the top portion a minute. You can see some chain hanging there, so I'm going to bring this back out. What I did since this birdhouse or bird feeder, whatever I want to call it, birdhouse feeder or bird cage, one of those three pertain to this. <laughs> um, it had, you know, of course, these cute little loopies on the end, and I wanted to do something with them. And since this side over here I thought was so full with flowers, I, I wanted something over here to kind of compensate for the largeness over here. I wanted to bring something to this side to kind of balance out the project. And plus I like moving parts on my projects a little bit. So what I did is I took white chain and I did like a three tier effect, hooked it to some, um, to a jump ring and then hooked the jump ring to this little loop here. So it kind of has a little dangle. And then on this side, this comes, you know, you do things in three. So I have, I showed you the Roman numeral seven and the metal number four. So hanging from this end of the chain, I've got a number eight. So there's my three metal numbers. And then I've got a little key, which of course corresponds to the little lock that I showed you in the front here. So we've got a lock and a key, okay? All right, now I am going to, we are now gonna go to the inside of this little birdhouse cage feeder, okay? So let's see, what's the best way? I think I'm just going to bring it up like this. I'm gonna get down here on my knee so I can see what I'm doing and I think I'll kind of hold it up and point things out on the inside. Okay. And we'll bring it in. I'll try not to be too wobbly. Holding it with my left hand. We'll bring it in a little bit closer. I know it will be hard to see, but basically what I did is the inside, you can see down in the bottom, all sorts of flowers tucked in there. It's the same flowers I've been using, like over here. And then a couple of more of those beautiful rosette trims from the piece by piece. They're in the back and toward the bottom. So I've got a bunch of flowers. I just nestled the whole bottom with nothing but flowers. There, now you can kind of see in there. See, it's all nestled with just nothing but flowers. And then I can move this clock a little bit. The whole back is all nestled. And right in that cluster of aqua is my uh, rosette trims from Beverly's shop. <laughs> Things just get covered up. We can't help it. But see, it's just all nestled back in there with flowers. Okay? I've said that three times, so I think you get the idea. And the very back, nestled in the flowers, I don't know why. I just thought it was cute, you know, to just give the birdie a little light. <laughs> so I put a little, um, this is a, a metal lamp post. And then I added again another butterfly. This is, oopsie, getting a little wobbly. This is a uh, bird nest that I got. It's from Recollections brand. And I finally got to use it. Char, 
wonderful lady. Hey, Char. Um, she's on my design team. She did a little shopping for me at Michael's, and she sent me, because I've been wanting to use these little cute bird nests with eggs in them. And so she sent me a package of these. She got them for me because there was a big clearance sale at Michael's, and she was able to get some for me. So I finally used one because I'm just thinking they're so cute on projects. And then, you know, a little you know bird's nest with eggies and it has to have a little mama right so i've got a very cute i love this color uh this is like an aqua or a teal resin bird and that is from beverly's shop okay so as you can see because i was moving this clock around this clock dangles okay this clock was actually a bit of a headache for me because i was trying to get the clock inside, but I needed to be able to have it accessed so the person that gets this, they can access it and change the battery if the battery dies. So I was trying to do a twofold thing. Either they could get in here, you know, just kind of with their fingers and kind of turn it around like this and access the battery, or if they wanted to pull the whole lid off and take it out, they could. And I had a couple of different versions of clocks in here. And I'm working in a teeny tiny small space. I don't even think the inside of this feeder, I've got to look real quick. I don't even think it's maybe six inches wide, you know. And um, trying to get those flowers and stuff in there, I had to use, I use these a lot. I just have to show you. These were my friend, long needle nose pliers. I would put hot glue on the end of the flower and then I would grab it with these needle nose pliers and I would gently tuck them in every single flower because this space is so small in there. I mean, I can get my hand in there, but it's a tight fit. So I'm just curious. I was actually wrong. This birdcage feeder birdhouse <laughs> five inches wide five inches in width in diameter that's all the space I had to work with in there so trying to put flowers and stuff inside of here but still trying to let the clock be movable and hang and be able to have the clock turn to access the battery was quite a bit of a challenge because I had the flowers all stacked up in there, but then there was no room for the clock or the clock wouldn't turn. And so then I had a clock just laying in there, you know, so on and so forth. <laughs> I finally found something that worked. Now, if they, this person wants to take this clock out, I had to devise a way that if the lid is taken off, it can be accessed. Okay, so I'm going to lift my camera up and just kind of show you because I'm sure you're curious. Bring my camera up to the tip top. Going to tip this down just a little bit. I did not glue the lid on. I was going to at first but decided not to. So the lid comes right off. Okay, it's not pretty underneath, but the lid does come off. Just texture paint it all inside. And what I did is there's a bar inside already in here because of something that was already attached to the feeder and so what I did is I glued a little mini clothespin inside and then so if this person just actually wants to take the whole clock out all they got to do is push down on this clothespin see and it'll open it up so if they stick their fingers inside open up that clothespin let me grab it here there we go they can actually take out the whole entire clock. And then what I did is this is a little seven gypsies clip that I glued to the top and then I added a Tim Holtz swivel clip to the top of that so that they, you know, can pull the clock out if they wanted. And I was going to put numbers on here, but I didn't have numbers small enough and I decided I didn't want to do that. I was just going to leave it without the numbers. So I just kind of used this beautiful paper. It's called So Noted. Um, let me check the brand real quick, or the maker, called So Noted, and it is by, of course, So Noted, got it right, there we go, by Teresa Collins. So Noted line by Teresa Collins, that is the paper that I used. Okay, anyway, so that's how I did the clock, okay, so that they could take it in and out. All right, I'm just going to leave the clock to the side because it takes a little bit to get it back on. You actually have to kind of hold it with your fingers and some needle nose pliers to make it work. <laughs> anyway, so there is my design team project for the piece by piece, clock included. 
I hope she likes it. I hope you guys liked it. I will leave the links down below to the piece by piece, of course, and to my blog for closer up pictures and direct links to the products I used. Thank you for sharing your time with me, and I'll talk with you again soon. Bye.